everyone in today's video I wanted to show you Memoria Press Simply Classical Curriculum Level B. I have the entire program here and make sure to stick around to the end of the video for a giveaway. So anyway I wanted to show you each component of this program and I also want to show you inside the manual or the lesson plans so you'll get a really good understanding of what this program entails. If you're unfamiliar with Memoria Press it is a classical education company that makes homeschool curriculum as well as school curriculum so they do have two different divisions. Now, the Simply Classical part of Memoria Press is specifically designed for children with special needs. But those special needs could be anything from ADHD to Down syndrome to uh, autism, any special need where your child might need some kind of accommodations in order to have a classical education. And the goal of this curriculum is really to have a program that has those modifications already done for you, basically. I highly encourage you to, to check out the Simply Classical. I'll leave the website down below so you can get a feel for what kind of the purpose of it is. But for this program, the Level B, that is their second program. They have Level A, B, C, and then 1, 2, 3, and so forth. And so level B is for ages three to four. Now, ages three to four, meaning actual chronological age. So a, say, neurotypical three to four-year-old could also use this as a preschool program or an older child with a developmental age of three to four, like on that level developmentally could use this. So you need to you know, consider the developmental age of your child when choosing a curriculum uh, from Simply Classical. So the first page of the Simply Classical manual is the book list. And so this is really handy to go off and check back. So you have the core curriculum. These are things you're going to need for the curriculum. And then you have the read alouds. Now you could get these at the library. I do have them all here, but these definitely you could get them at the library. And then at the end of the year, there's an eight-week review, and it includes two workbooks if you want to do that eight-week review. And then there's this book, Prayers for Children, that is needed that was used in Level A. So if you didn't do Level A, you would need to get that book separately, basically. Okay, then we have some introductory notes, and it offers 10 key features. So this program kind of... Uh, how, how I was saying the modifications or accommodations that are made it includes these 10 things. I'll, I'm, going, I'm not going to read the all of it, but I'm going to read the bold to you so that you can kind of get a feel for this. So, the rich, beautiful content of a classical Christian education, a slower pace with ample review, an emphasis on books with elegant illustrations, a multi-sensory presentation of material, oral language components, skills checklists, integration across subjects, themed levels, a trivium approach, and Socratic questioning. So, I mean, just by that, don't you just fall in love? I know, I know, I know. Okay, so now here we have the readiness levels. So this is level B, and it's called Essentials, Etiquette, and Ear Training is kind of the theme. And it covers manners, phonological awareness, music, counting, arts and crafts, fine motor skills, and Bible stories for the approximate chronological age or skill level of three to four. And then it gives you, you know, a breakdown of the other levels too. Now there is more levels in level three. This is an older manual, but now it goes up. I think level seven and eight is actually out now. So it goes up pretty high now. Where do I begin? And there's readiness checklists and frequently asked questions. And here we have the readiness checklist here. And so you can go through this. I'm going to kind of just leave this here for a second in case you do want to pause the video to take a look closer at these skills so you can get an idea if this level would be good. But if you have any questions, call Memoria Press because they are very, very helpful. So we're continuing here. So it's not just, oh, actually I'll go back to there. So it's not just, you know, language, but it's cognitive ability, emo social emotional development, fine motor skills, gross motor skills, 
And then, so there's lots of different components that go into it. And then skills to develop during the program. So the first was readiness. Now it's during. And then it gives you tips to improve these things. So tips to improve cognition, tips to improve social emotional learning. It gives you examples of games you might want to have or, or other books even. And tips to improve fine motor skills and things like that. So honestly, like I found that so, so nice that that content in the beginning is very rich and I wouldn't skip it. Then it has the read aloud books and it tells you what week for what book basically. And then the suggested supply list. You're going to need things like Play-Doh, but it gives you a recipe to make your own plastic knife, glue, construction paper, sidewalk, chalk, scissors, crayons, sandpaper, ABCs. Um, and then new for level B and it says pencils, wiki sticks, drawing paper, watercolor paint, sandpaper ABCs, and sandpaper numerals. So all of those things there. And then uh, it talks about cultivating wonder. Talks It gives teachers notes for prayer, calendar, recitation, alphabet lesson, and ear training, number lesson, fine motor skills, literature, poetry, language and music, manic manners, etiquette, and games. I just like combined manners and etiquette instead of another word. <laughs> enrichment or therapies it gives a space in the manual which you will see if they have therapies that they're going to and things like that bible liter literacy and closing prayer gives a suggested routine um, all kids in my opinion do great with a routine but kids with special needs especially the routine is essential not necessarily a schedule but a routine and then we've got the recitation and memory work for you and um, if you're familiar with memory press they're Different levels have recitation, but this recitation is very simple. Now, um, this is the typical of a Memoria Press layout. If you're familiar at all with Memoria Press, you will kind of know this layout. But basically, um, it's broken down by subject and by day, which is super nice. And so, as you can see, too, we are working with a four-day week, which... Love, I love it when when companies do that. <laughs> but the kind of the subjects, uh, you might say, are prayer, calendar, recitation, alphabet lesson slash ear training, number lesson slash fine motor skills, literature slash language, poetry and music, manners and games, enrichment or other therapy. So you can write that in. Bible literacy and closing prayer. You can mark off the boxes if you want. It has you do things like record an oral language pretest so then you can compare it later on it is very hands-on and lots of different suggestions you do focus on the same read aloud book for the whole week so you know on week two you're focusing on the little engine that could but each each day you read it you'll be asking different questions and noticing different things in the book and so it just goes along like that. So they're going to be, like it said, learning the letters, numbers. This really focuses on letters and numbers in this level. So if your child does not know that yet, that's great. If your child already knows the letters and numbers, this would be too easy. So you'd want to really pay attention to those readiness guides. So that's what that looks like. I don't need to go through every week, but you get the idea of how that works. Okay. Oh, let me go back. I want to go back a little bit. So we see we have week 34. And then it says, congratulations, because you finished. But then there is an eight-week like extension review. And basically, that's because kids tend to, again, thrive on routine, plus can easily forget things. And especially you might notice with a child with special needs, they might need that consistency in routine and also that consistency in constant review and at this age and level it's not like it feels like work to them it feels like fun bonding time with mom really okay so and the days you know are lighter in the review weeks but it's laid out the same as you can see and that, whoops, almost, that is almost it. There we go. So that is what the manual looks like. So now let me dive into the core components of the program that you will need. There's quite a few. What also attracted me to this program was that they use a lot of 
workbooks from Rod and Staff, which I find interesting. I think it's Rod and Staff, right? Let me see. Well, anyways, I'll show them to you in a second. But anyways, so these are kind of the core components of the curriculum, and I'll go through these. There are letter flashcards, and so these have the capital and lowercase letter, and then on the back picture. And then there are two CDs, A Child's Garden of Songs, and Back to the Garden. Now, I bought this. I never opened it, truth be told. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I didn't, ha I couldn't, like, there was a whole issue with the CD player. We'd have a CD player downstairs, and then we finally got one from Goodwill, but it was too late, and anyway, so there's my story on the CDs, but, um, you know, there's that. So that, this is where the, the poetry is on these. Okay, so then we have, and these aren't in any particular order, but we have Bible pictures to color. Now, yeah, this is Rod and Staff, but... Rod and Staff has their own Bible book, but this doesn't use the Rod and Staff Bible book. This uses, and I'm sorry, this table is really shaky, but it's a nice table to film on. But it, for some reason, it's like so shaky. It's not sturdy. It's an Ikea table. Anyway, it's like an Ikea desk. Anyway, so for Bible, these are your two main components, a child's garden of Bible stories and Bible pictures to color. Like I said, this is from Rod and Staff, and they have their own Bible storybook that matches this, but for whatever reason, Memoria Press uses this instead. And so these stories are really, really simple, which is nice. Well, I, I guess I want to say really, really simple. I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating with really, really, because there is content here. Um, but I think they're just, you know, you see, this is like a lesson right here, you know? So it's not too much, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And then the Bible pictures to color. Now, um, at the time, my daughter actually didn't love to color, but she did like to paint. So we did that. Um, but she didn't use much of this because she really was not interested in coloring at the time. But anyway, um, so that's kind of what that look like looks like. And it does tell you in the manual what pages to use. And you may not always go in exact order. So you'd have to pay attention to the manual because it will match the Bible story that you're reading. And then we've got uh, prayers for children. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure I had this book when I was a kid. Like, not this exact, you know, not this book. This is from Thrift Books. But I'm pretty sure I had this book, Prayers for Children, when I was a kid. And then um, my first ABC book, my daughter loved this book. She just really, really loved this book. I don't know why. Um, but she, I, she, was, she just was really enamored with this book. She really, really liked this book. And it, it, the curriculum uses, this is really a, a very strong component in the program. So the curriculum uses this book like every day. So you will definitely need this book. And um, my daughter loved this one. She definitely loved this one. And then um, that's a DK book. And then she also really liked this DK one too, this my first body board book. So something um, about, she likes small things. And I think because these books are smaller and they're just engaging and lively and bright. And so she really liked this one. She, she liked this one, but she liked that ABC one much more. She, I mean, she carried that around in her little purse. I mean, it was adorable. <laughs> but um, anyway, then we've got a child's garden of verses. And so this is uh, more poetry. So I guess I shouldn't say it's just in the CDs. It is on here. Now, I don't love this one myself, personally. Um, they do spend a lot of time on each poem. And they're really wordy poems. I mean, it's good poetry, right? But like, a three and four year old, this just goes over their head, you know, and cause like, um, like we don't call them bedclothes. We call them sheets. Like they don't know what they're talking about. So this was honestly the only book. Yeah. Uh, this whole thing that I didn't really care for, but I mean, this is classic. Like who doesn't have a child's garden of verses? Like, are you even a homeschooler? If you don't have a child's garden of verses, I'm just kidding. I'm like, that was totally a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like, you know, I feel like this is one of those classic books that you should have and you should read. But, um, you know, it's classic poetry by Robert Louis Stevenson. But, you know, I don't necessarily love his poetry. But that's okay. That's just me. Okay, but that's pretty much the only thing I, I didn't care for. And then we've got prayer for... And oh, okay, uh, let me say. Let me, let me add something. Something like this. Uh, th this book in particular... 
you could totally replace this with different poetry. Okay. But like this, not this one. Um, this one. Like you really need this one. You know, so like, does that make sense? Like you could replace the poetry, but you couldn't replace this. Like, because this is so key to learning their letters. Um, but you could replace the poetry and it wouldn't really have any ill effect. Okay, so then we have Prayer for a Child. So another prayer book. Some of that ones. I I'm pretty sure I had that one when I was a kid too. And then Richard Scary, uh, Please and Thank You book. You know what? Okay, I guess I'll say, I, I know I should probably love Richard Scary books too, but I don't actually love Richard Scary books either. <gasps> I can't believe I said that, but okay. <laughs> now this book I love. Um, I've actually owned this book a few times. <laughs> Um, but it's Big Thoughts for Little People, ABCs to Help You Grow. Uh, long before I heard of this program or anything, uh, with some of my older girls, I actually, we went through this book. It's super cute. Um, and, you know, it has a letter of the alphabet. And it has a short little passage. And it refers them to the picture. So they're engaged with the picture. Um, because you see these questions here, like, why is the girl crying? Is it all right to cry if you're hurt? Should you cry every time you get a little bump? And, and so it just asks really good questions. And anyway, it's, this one's darling. So this is definitely, I love this one. That one is great. Okay. Then, um, we have, how can I help God's calling for kids? This is a really awesome book too. And I highly recommend this one. Okay, and then we have Richard Scarry's uh, best first book ever. Again, the Richard Scarry books are not my favorite, but, you know, it's okay. Like, they're they're good for what they're used for. I just don't personally love Richard Scarry books, but th this is a nice book. Like, you know, it has an alphabet, has, you know, colors and shapes and kind of like community helpers and manners and, you know, all of that stuff. So it is nice in that sense and... But I don't know. I just, I don't know. They're just, Richard's Scary books aren't my favorite. But that's okay. Um, but the read alouds, I'll show you those in a second. Those are awesome. Um, and then the big animal book. My daughter also loved this one. Um, these animals are because they're, they're real. They're, you know what I mean? They're like real pictures, not illustrations. And so... Yeah, this one was a hit. So she liked that one a lot. And then it has, let me move a couple things here. I'm trying not to shake this table, but like I said, this table is so wobbly, so. Okay. So then these are kind of, well, no, I'll show you this first. So then we have this Simply Classical Crafts. This is really awesome, I love this book. It has a craft for every letter of the alphabet. So that's what this is. So even if you um, didn't have this whole curriculum, if you just wanted craft ideas to, like if you're doing a letter of the week study or something like that, um, this book would be perfect to go along with it. And it's not consumable so because it just gives directions. So it just has a craft for every single letter of the alphabet. And I'm pretty sure this is Basically the same thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, from uh, Pre-K. Yes, it is. Okay, so Simply Classical Crafts Book 1 is the same thing as the Junior Kindergarten Book of Crafts. I thought so, because if you are familiar with NED Blessings channel, she based her whole Pre-K curriculum around their craft book I think something like that okay I may be mistaken but go check out her channel too she's awesome and I know she uh, has used the Memoria Press craft books as well but this just has literally a craft and they're so cute for every letter of the alphabet and then in the back let me get to it oops it has some additional crafts so it goes through the letters and then seasonal crafts here so Fall leaf rubbing and so forth. And templates. So really fun stuff there. Okay. So that this is very fun. Very fun. 
Okay, then we get into kind of like the workbooks. So as you can see so far, this has not been workbook heavy because it's designed for three to four year olds. So what we do have is the numbers coloring book from Memoria Press. And again, my daughter did not like to color. She still doesn't love to color. She's five now and she's not really a color. She likes to draw. So this one was really not used that much. Um, but it was still useful. So even though she didn't color it, okay, so I, I guess I better clarify this because even though she doesn't like to color and say your kid doesn't like to color either, first of all, I do try to encourage them to color anyways because it develops, you know, different skills. But this book is used all the time in the curriculum too for identifying numbers and counting. So even if your child doesn't like to color, this book is what I would call definitely necessary. So I really think out of these core things that I'm showing you, the only thing that I think you can easily swap out is the poetry. Um, the other things are really kind of essential. So that's, so there's, you know, letter, I mean, letter, <laughs> it's a number book and I'm saying letter, a number in, in the number form, the word form, and then to count. So this book is used all the time. And then we have another Memoria Press book, which is the same concept, but it's alphabet coloring book. And so it's the same thing. Again, even if your child is not going to color it, you still need to get it, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, because they're gonna be using this all the time too. And then it has a couple of little, um, mem or Rod and Staff, I was saying Memoria Press, Rod and Staff workbooks. And it has counting with numbers. And I just love the Rod and Staff workbooks. I actually have videos on the Rod and Staff series because you can use, Rod and Staff has this like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, and O. Maybe it goes to just M or O. Anyways, they have a whole alphabet series for preschool and kindergarten, but um, you can see like there's cut and paste activities and things like that. Um, my daughter also does not like to glue things. So, um... She does not like getting glue on her hands, so um, she doesn't like to glue things, but I love these books because I think they're adorable, and they just work on so many different skills. Um, they are themed, so this is um, kind of, this is like fine motor skills in this one. That's why they do a lot of cut, cutting and coloring, and this one is like their math workbook, basically. And then let's show you, there are two books for the eight-week extension which are Do It Carefully and Everywhere We Go. And we actually didn't use these at all um, yet, but uh, my daughter is in kindergarten now, and these are totally appropriate for kindergarten. So, okay, yes, she, she like did one random thing. Um, and so I was thinking we might actually just save these for this summer, possibly. But um, anyway, so can see that ramps up quite a bit and but again I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those because I do have a full dedicated video to these Rod and Staff workbooks okay so then we're going to move into the read alouds and of course you can get these from your library this is my daughter's all time favorite book you can probably tell because it's kind of you know, this one's looking a little rough. Um, I would say the ABC book that I showed you earlier is like her second favorite book. Well, not so much anymore. The ABC book isn't really her favorite anymore, but it was for like a solid year. <laughs> she loved that book. Um, but she loves Harry the Dirty Dog. Uh, she just adores this book. So uh, this was a favorite for sure. And then we've got um, Harold and the Purple Crayon. Everybody knows that one, right? These are classic, I feel like, classic uh, stories for the preschool age. Corduroy, Owl Baby. She also really loved this one. All my kids love this one. Um, I think of it because the owls are just so cute. They're so cute. And it's just a sweet story about their mommy and their mommy comes back. And it's really, like, repetitive. Um, you know, where's mommy? And I want my mommy. And they love saying, I want my mommy. And so everybody just loves this book and it has really pretty illustrations. So 
which I guess is one of their points anyways, like they said in the beginning. A uh, Little Cloud by Eric Carle. And then um, Tawny Scrawny Lion. It has a lot of these little golden books in it too. Well, not a lot, but a handful of them. So doesn't this just bring you back to your childhood? I feel like this whole program brings me back to my childhood. Pancakes for breakfast. This is a wordless book. And I mean, it's Tommy De pa Powell. Uh, I'm not, I can't say his name correctly, but um, if you're familiar with his books, we've read quite a few of his books. We just read one. Uh, it was an Italian Christmas story by him. Anyway, that was totally irrelevant to this video, but, and then I'll show you that one in a second. If I move that book, it's going to shake the whole table. The Very Hungry Caterpillar, of course, like who doesn't love The Very Hungry Caterpillar? Um, and then my girls particularly like this board book because it's so sturdy. And then they love this part. Like even my nine and 10 year olds love this book. <laughs> anyway, so that's. Super fun. And then here's another little golden book. The Pokey Little Puppy. And Drummer Hoff. And the Color Kittens. And the Christmas Story. We've got Henny Penny. Again, like classics, right? We're going on a beer hunt. Of course, like how could you have a preschool program without we're going on a beer hunt? And then the Happy Man and his Dump Truck. The little engine that could. Again, I feel like you have to have the little engine that could. The little engine that could just brings me such fond memories with my grandma too. Um, I actually have the copy of the little engine that could that my grandma actually did read me. Um, but I have that one set aside and so we, we use the board book for um, my kids because I, I can't, I, my, my grandma read me this book so many times like it's so it's just a favorite. It just brings back, I like I told you, this just brings back such good memories from my childhood. Um, I've always loved books, though. So, um, And I probably can attribute that to my grandma because she loved to read to me. So I um, was raised with my parents, but my grandma just loved to read to me. So that's what I remember, um, you know, when I was over at her house, snuggling up and reading the little engine that could over and over and over and over. <laughs> Uh, twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Of course, everybody knows that, but the illustrations, again, are very, very pretty. And then, I think, is that it? I think we finished. I think that was it. That is totally it. Okay, so that was all the read-alouds, and that was everything from this curriculum. So as you can see, it's quite a bit of stuff. Now, I wanted to talk about the giveaway. So... I am going to be giving away this curriculum. Now, let me clarify what I'm actually giving away. So I'm going to give away the entire core curriculum along with the required supplement, okay? So we're keeping the read alouds just because they're special, we love them, and, and I feel like the read alouds you can get from the library but I wanted to make sure that when I was giving this away, that you would have the complete curriculum to be able to start it immediately with your child. And so I'm going to give away this whole core curriculum. Everything is included. As you could see, some of the pages are used in some of the workbooks, but I felt like because there was so little completed, that I definitely don't want to toss them. So again, you'll get the entire core curriculum plus the required supplement. So what that looks like, I'll bring it all up here. Okay, now, okay. So that looks like all this. So we're gonna have the manual my big animal book, my best first book ever. How can I help? The precious, my first ABC and my first body board book. And 
don't worry if you're like, but your daughter loves this one. We actually have two. So, I mean, I tell you, she loves this book so much. <laughs> we have two of them. <laughs> um, so don't worry. We have another one. Uh, Child's Garden of Verses, Prayers for Children, the Bible Pictures to Color, a Child's Garden of Stories, the Counting with Numbers, Adventures with Books, the Alphabet Coloring Book, the Number Coloring Book, the Simply Classical crafts, the CDs, and the flashcards. So that is the giveaway. Now, how can you enter the giveaway? I would love for you to do two things. I would love for you to follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to kind of build up my Instagram followers. That's where I post more like day-to-day -day like pictures of our like homeschooling in action, that sort of thing. So go follow me over at Educational Roots on Instagram. But also, here's and please subscribe to this channel if you're not. Um, and then I want you to comment something totally random that you know about me from watching my videos. Okay? So now if you don't want to enter the giveaway but still want to comment just make sure you mention that. <laughs> um, but it could be anything. So something that you've learned about me through my videos. It could be funny. It could be like whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm just looking for some engagement here. And um, just I love to chat with you guys. That's my favorite thing about YouTube is the comments. Well, I like it. I mean, I like all of it. I like editing. I like doing it all. But I mean, the, the main thing is I've made so many good friends on YouTube. And so you guys are my friends and I want to uh, just chat with you. So all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel and over on Instagram as well. And then just leave me a comment, basically. Leave me a comment on this video. And if you don't want to be entered, but you leave a comment, just make sure you put that. That way I can... Um, not include you in the drawing. So this video is going to go up on, well, on February 6, 2021. And the, it will be up for one week. So, well, not the video will stay up, but I mean the giveaway. So I will choose a giveaway winner on February 13th, 2021. So if you're watching this video, long after that. I'm sorry, but I still hope you enjoyed this video. So again, this video, I mean, this giveaway starts Saturday, February 6, 2021 and ends February 13th, 2021. So you have a full week to watch the video and comment and subscribe. And I hope this blesses somebody. And I know it blessed me. So I hope to pass along some blessings and I will be having more giveaways coming for different curriculums, different grade levels. I, a few months ago, gave away a lot of curriculum in my community tab. Um, so make sure you watch that too. So I just said, hey, you know, what do you need? If I have it, I'll send it to you. And so that was really fun. But I still have some things left over that nobody said in that that they needed. So I'm going to be doing some more giveaways of some more curriculum. I'm trying to become minimalist. Okay, not really, but kind of. Like, sort of. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. It is a long one, but, you know, when I go through full curriculums like that, that's what happens, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, of course, even if you don't want to enter the giveaway. If you love things homeschool, this is the place to be and I'll catch you in the next one.